Hello everyone, how's it going? Welcome back, and yes, welcome back to the Ray. No, just kidding, kidding. Off stage, off stage is what it's called. Um, welcome back, and uh, yes, I already did a boomer move before we even started the stream. How, how amazing is that? We should, I, I saw something someone said in the chat, we should keep a boomer move counter on the, uh, on the side of the screen. I, I agree with that. I could, I could definitely, you know, it instigate that somehow. We, we, we can do that. I just need to It'd be funny if I made more boomer moves as a result of it. Yeah, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be funny? Anyway, um, welcome back. And today we have a very special guest, uh, Augustine Hadelik, uh, who is a Grammy award winning violinist and uh, you know, chamber musician. He does everything and, uh, you know, he's just, I admire him so much. I first heard about him when I was, uh, gosh, I would have been like, before I moved to the States, actually. So I would have been about, I think, 13 or 14, 14 maybe years old when I first heard about him. Um, and, uh, yeah, he had won Indianapolis violin competition back then. It was an amazing feat what he did. And uh, he just played so beautifully. You guys should definitely check out his stuff. His links are in the description below. But anyway, before we get to introducing him, I wanted to bring out some uh, violin facts. You know, I felt like, hey, we've had clarinet facts, flute facts. Why not bring out violin facts just to keep things, you know, consistent? And for those of us out there who might be watching, hello to you all who aren't uh, violinists. Maybe you're interested in knowing. So... The modern violin was invented by the Amadi family in the 16th century. In fact, Amadis are uh, pretty sought after instruments as well up there with uh, Stradivari and Guarneri. Um, playing the violin burns approximately 170 calories per hour. So you know what you have to do, practice. Um, violin tops are made of spruce. The sides and back are commonly made of maple. And the fingerboard is ebony. At least, you know, that's what most violins are made of. Uh, the most expensive violins are made by Stradivarius and Guarneri's. Well, Stradivari and Guarneri. Well, which can be over $10 million, I mean. And, uh, yeah, Augustine has a pretty fine instrument. I wonder if he'll show us his violin as well um, later on. Violin bows can also be very expensive, though. Uh, the most famous bows makers are Tort and Picot. So you have French bows and Italian instruments being the most expensive, the best combination. Um, and the replaceable parts, because, you know, I get asked this question a lot. Are the strings just super expensive or something? Uh, no, it's not the strings. The, in fact, the strings, we probably switch out every two months or so. Uh, the replaceable parts, which don't affect the value of an instrument, are the strings, the chin rest, uh, which is this part of the instrument, the chin rest, the tail piece. This can get switched out, it can get cracked, and it doesn't affect the uh, value of the instrument. Uh, chin rest, uh, so tail piece, bridge. Bridge, you probably have to switch out every, I don't know, 10, like 20 years, I would say. Some people leave it on for longer. Uh, if it's, but you know, other people have different preferences as to height and slope and stuff like that. Uh, the pegs, uh, as well as the end pin, you know, those are, and oh, and of course the sound pole. So though that you go into superstitious land. So anyway, um, thought you guys would enjoy that. And, uh, without further ado, I would like to welcome Augustine Hadelik. Yay. How's it going, Augustine? How's it going? Hi, um, I'm doing great. It's great to see you. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. Uh, to me too. To stream with you. Yeah. Yeah. Great to see you too. Um, how have you been? How's this quarantine period been treating you? Well, adjustment for the first uh, for the first few weeks to go from traveling all the time and 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 performing um, almost every week to suddenly uh, spending time at home and not um, also not knowing how what would happen. Uh, it took me a little bit to get used to, but um, in a way, it's also been nice to have time to play some pieces I hadn't played in a long time, look at some new new rap and um, and kind of uh, maybe it's a less less hectic way way to be. But I, I miss I miss playing with other people a lot. Oh, uh, that's yeah. that's the that's the main thing that I feel like um, that's that's where I got a lot of inspiration and motivation from is the interaction with other musicians and like playing with other people playing for other people like in front of an audience and feeling that uh that vibe that the audience gives off and so that's 
definitely something I'm missing a lot. Right, um, right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, before we move on, uh, welcome to today's uh, live stream. I've been really looking forward to this. As I said, you know, I've been a huge fan of yours uh, for, I don't know, many years now. Um, but before we move on, I just wanted to do a quick audio check. We always do this. There's stuff that happens during live streams and, you know, we just roll with it because everything's live. Everything you see here, guys, is live. And uh, I wanted to just do a quick audio check. Uh, obviously, I'm getting some comments that uh, the audio is a bit soft on your end, but I've already boosted you up to 200%. So there's not much I can do on my end. Is there any way that you can boost this your better? audio? Is this better? Yes. No? A little higher? Yeah. Yeah. A little higher. Like okay. boost it by yeah. 50 if you can. Oh, in the in the settings. I think so. I think it's your uh, if your mic input can uh, just go a little more, a yes. little, little bit more. Okay. Oh, you know what? You could actually do that in Discord settings as well. Um, yes. Yeah. I, from minus eighty five. No, 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 not that part. No. Uh, it's the no, output volume. Output volume. There we go. Yes. Okay, got it. It was at fifty percent. Now I'll do it at. That's perfect. Thank you. This is, but this is where it says output device, output volume. You, That's correct. We, I'm hearing you loud okay. and clear now. Just whatever you've done, okay, great. we can leave that. That's perfect. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Uh, it's it's uh, Boomer August. No. So. <laughs> <laughs> We're all boomers when it comes to this stuff. You know, it's funny because um, a lot of the people in our Discord fam, they're like, well, in the they're they're teenagers, but. They're actually little boomers as well. So, uh, you know, I've, I've caught a few of you out there making some boomer moves. So, you know, in the end, we're all boomers. So don't feel too bad about it. I get called a boomer probably once a day. So it's all good. It's all good. It's become a, a, a sign of affection. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. But um, anyway, wanted to uh, just say quickly, uh, we are going to be reviewing your submitted videos today, uh, Augustine and I, and then we're going to be watching some other videos and perhaps, you know, I think Augustine, you have your, your instrument handy as well, right? Did you manage to get the whole audio thing working? Like the uh, interface and which everything? Which audio thing? No. Yes. Okay. So, uh, so are we hearing you through the mics? Yes. Oh, nice. Very nice. Uh, it should be, should all work, work, work well. So the, it's, uh, you know, the, the tricky thing with these, with these things, I've, I've learned a lot about audio recording and all this uh, technological side. The tricky thing is, if you want to have good sound, then to have dynamic compression, but a lot of, a lot of devices that make streaming easier, they will actually make soft sounds and loud sounds the same volume, right. but then violin playing sounds bad. So, uh, so this is why there's often the situation that then a voice is just softer than, you know, if I start playing my violin, it's like 10 times as loud, right? Exactly, so exactly, yeah. It's, it's tricky. Yeah, yeah, we, we basically, well. we set it up for the violin playing and then suddenly you try to talk and it's like you sound super, super far away. So those yeah. are some of those things that, that are unavoidable or, you know, when we're listening to uh, audio on the, like classical music recordings on the stereo. And then it's like mm -hmm. the softest parts. It's so nice. And then it suddenly it's like, dun, 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 you know, <laughs> You're just like, what? <laughs> yeah. The, the, you know, heart attack <laughs> moments in the piece. But anyway, I guess that's the way we love classical music. Um, so anyway, yeah. all right, let's get to some uh, review videos that people have posted. Obviously I want to show you, these are people that, uh, have been really excited to play for you. Uh, we have a few people coming up. The first person is uh, George Lawson, and he is 16 years old, and he's going to be playing Bach A minor. All right. <laughs> Thank you. 
Wow, very nice, very nice, George. All right. What do you think, Augustine? Well, yeah, it sounded it sounded good. You know, when when you with Bach, I mean, we can go on. We could sit here for the next two months <laughs> and talk about <laughs> every aspect of this, this is music That's that true. we spend our whole life playing, and it's kind of like the Bible of violinists, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's. Uh, you know, there's a lot. Are you? <laughs> there's always a lot to I, say. I say. But it's not good. I want to ask you first: Are you are you pro vib or anti vib in Bach? I want to I, I want to get your thoughts. Well, this is uh, that's that's a difficult that's a difficult question. I think the key is that vibrato should be used in the right place, like but not all the time. I think that the idea that you vibrate any note because you can. Uh, like just do this kind of continuous vibrato. That was something that just came, came, it's a tradition that started really in the late 19th century, early 20th century. And before that, vibrato was more something that you, you just used for expression. But I think when something is, is singing, when there are certain notes that are like the high point of the phrase, then that's, those are the right ones to make vibrato. So it's like, it's like an ornament make that note more beautiful you make it special mm. by vibrating right. but so i think it's it's the, the, the key is to figure out what's the peak of the phrase and that, that you vibrate and leading up to it be sure not to vibrate too much otherwise you take away from the effect that the vibrato is later going to have at the you know at right, the moment right, right. That, you, that you really want to bring out and so the danger that ha what can happen for a violinist is because we have some fingers that want to vibrate uh, and other fingers that don't want to vibrate, like, you know, the pinky uh -huh, never, uh -huh. never wants to as much. Right. right? So, uh, so to be aware that your fingers don't suddenly like start vibrating on their own, like because they because it's easy right. uh, to always put the vibrato where you want it. So, anyway, so right, it's a conscious, question. it's a conscious decision not yes. to, not to just have it suddenly be like, Oh, you know, you're just, just doing it automatically that it's every exactly. note is consciously, uh, let's say placed and, and, and yeah, it's just like, it's part of the phrasing and the musicality. Right. right. So I think vibrato was definitely part of the playing style, but it wasn't the way it's now that, you start playing, switch on vibrato, you know, and like, <laughs> yeah, it was more, it, it was more, you were playing a phrase and then here's a really special note. Let's vibrate it. And then it sounds really beautiful. Like, you know, the way, to, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's a, it's a vocal thing, you know, to make the, make the notes ring. That's uh, how it mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. should be used in bar. What do you, what do you, um, what would you so say one thing um, that, to, to, yeah, to George, what would you say? Well, I think. Uh, my my reaction was you, you could maybe think a little bit about how you're going from one uh, from one harmony from one bass note to the next to have a little bit of direction always. Um, so you're going. Well, oh, I have to oh. Grab my violin, but you're gonna demonstrate. Gonna... We, you're the first guest that's demonstrating. <laughs> it's not gonna sound good, buddy. But. Uh... That's you going from here to always have the like the direction to the ah, next yes the impetus to, to the, the next, next place thing. yeah to the to, yeah to the next bass note and again that I'm vibing with there's it. often that you're like leading you're leading the listener this bass note to the next one and basically taking us to this. Uh, through this uh, trip, through the yeah, the the, the, the uh, progression line together. Right? Yes, yeah. the chord progression yeah. that it that you kind of have that uh, going. Oh, thank you so much for for demonstrating. By the way, that's uh, it. It just you know, music is you can talk about it all day long, uh, and that's what we're doing here. But um, it, there's so, just so much <laughs> that can't be said, right? It's just you, that can only be heard. I mean, it, yeah. it, well, the thing is, once when you describe it. When you talk about it, then sometimes it's hard to, it's hard to express exactly what you mean. And the other problem is, my problem is, uh, then I start singing and you don't want to hear that. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> it sounds terrible. And then uh, I, I find that I can usually show 
easier when I actually right, right. when I actually do it. Right. Amazing. But you know, one, one last thing. I think it's such a stunning thing in this piece is that right away between the second and third note, there's such a huge leap. Uh -huh. And I think I would also enjoy this. Uh, if you imagine how a voice, I'm saying, but here I am. So when you go, when you go, you know, it's such a huge, it's a huge interval. And when you imagine a voice doing that, it, it takes a bit of time. It almost feels like you're reaching for that high note. And I think you, you want to have that uh, a little bit in your violin playing too. That you don't want it to sound, you don't want it to sound like too easy, you know, like, like just dotty, but so we are aware what a big jump that it creates actually is. an expanse uh, of like yeah. this, this, this huge thing. Yeah, no, no, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Well, um, thank you for that. And thank you for also demonstrating, you know, guys, uh, sorry if there's a delay, this is all happening live and, you know, and we're just, we're just so thankful that, um, in the chat that, you know, we get to hear your awesome playing as well. So, so that's, that's definitely a treat. So, you know, for those of you who are picking on the, uh, uh the whole delay thing, stop, stop complaining. Just listen to the greatness of Augustine. <laughs> <laughs> but is the audio level is good, right? For, yeah, I mean, look, uh, it's coming the through. We're, we're routing it through like a million different ways. So the audio is um, is what it is. Uh, but, uh, ah. well, you know, that's we could, you know, I've spent probably like uh, <laughs> Prady, one of my mods can can attest to this. I probably spent like a good 12 hours testing audio, especially the discord audio, you know, which one mm -hmm. uh, is is you have to put an echo cancellation on that whole thing. Anyway, I don't want to even get into this super technical and, uh, but I'm happy to help you out so that next time it can be like crystal clear. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anyway. So, all right. Thank you, George, for your submission. Next up we have, Oh, let's see here. We've got Veronica also staying with Bach. She's 18 years old and she's going to play the fugue from the G minor. Very nice. Thank you for that, Veronica. All right. So, what do you? What do you? Uh, any, anything to say, Augustine? Well, you know, it's. Uh, what do you think? It's not very good. I love this view. It's. Uh, it's always. It's always great to listen to. I have, maybe, two, just, two gem tips, but they're not necessarily just like. It's not that. That is not that there was something like like wrong, but maybe just two general thing, tips that might help with Bach fugues. Mm -hmm. One is um, when you practice to like not always start at the beginning, that it can be very it it can be a good kind of practice method to start at all kinds of different places. It actually solidifies the the memory also, but um, it also 
it, because otherwise it can can happen that the beginning of the fugue is like more solid and more secure and more are comfortable than the well isn't that later, isn't that the always the part, case you know? we, we practice like the first page of something the first two pages yeah and then great. it's like beginning's amazing <laughs> and then it's like you know more, more yeah right right, right. i think sometimes to like go from the end because this fugue actually gets i i feel like it gets harder and harder it, yeah, uh, as definitely. it goes on like like the, it, towards the end that's so difficult um and then i have one other tip um Obviously, the, the, the main problem, like the main technical problem of these fugues are all these chords that follow each other yeah. so rapidly and like really hard patterns for the fingers, you know, difficult stretches. And um, my advice is, and I, I hope I'm not like contradicting what every teacher out there is saying, but my advice is, is to think about when you have to place each finger. That sometimes it, it's easy to think like, each chord, okay, these are the four fingers, put them down, play the chord, now change all of them, play the, play the next chord, play this, you know, and, but really the fingers only have to be there when it's time to play that note. So if you're, uh, just an example, if you, I would uh, here, for example, not play the first finger yet, and as I'm breaking, I put it down, you know, like so that the whole thing is is like a smoother motion. So it's not these sudden shi sudden switches from chord to chord, but it's actually like you put like, so so wait, you uh, put one finger down and then and then as you're already playing the chord, you finish you you finish it and you manage to get like a smoother motion getting from chord to chord because. Uh, it can it can enormously reduce tension. I mean, I wouldn't say this all the ah. time. Like sometimes it's no problem to just put all the fingers on and play the chord, but in the cases of like four note chords, when 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 there are issues, when it's like hard mm -hmm. to get the chord in tune, so when placing the fingers so suddenly, to think about well, which finger actually has to be there first, mm -hmm. uh, and let's you know let's let's kind of build the chord that that way yeah um, i'm feeling like it sounds already, like an abstract yeah. concept but no 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 uh, i'm 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 uh, totally yeah. getting what you mean like it's just when i you know especially this chord yeah i mean instead of having all okay. the fingers down exactly. like that just to yes yes yeah yeah it's, i've heard exactly. i've heard i've heard some teachers say that like well if you do that it's like you you don't get to ring the the bottom note but i mean if it's if it's in a passage like that i think it's okay because you're just it's just flowing forward right it's i think like yeah, you said it's, it's when it's not all every place it's uh, yeah it's not something i would do all the time but in the, i mean these are extreme situations right like extreme stretches for the hand right. And that for that chord you just mentioned, mm -hmm. it's hard to have all the fingers at once because it means that the first finger is gonna be like yeah, really, yeah. really bent, and it's like a really uh, uh, and so not everyone just like has the lifting like, it like long fingers. Yeah. yeah, I mean you have a you have a you seem to have a very long pinky finger. Ah, yes, as yes, as it's, what it I is a, when I see uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you for the compliment. I do have a, quite a long finger, pinky finger. It's it's. A, th a thread of common discussion over in the uh, in the in the in the chat rooms. It's 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 it's, it's on social media. It's uh, pinky length reveal at two hundred k subs, guys. Uh, but anyway, yeah, not everyone has such a long pinky. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, it's August. I'm sorry, Augustine. Sometimes you, you just have to hang around us more, and you're gonna yeah these these these. Um, these references, you, you'll you'll start. We, we're gonna have some uh, fan art for you as well very soon. <laughs> You're gonna see some <laughs> blurst photoshops and and all that. So uh, let's get to it, uh, guys. Okay, community, I look forward to it. Community artists, let's get <laughs> let's get some uh, Augustine blurst photos. <laughs> so uh, anyway, <laughs> no, but that's 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 some great advice. Um, actually, I had I, I also had a, a, a few things to say. I think that maybe. And what are your thoughts about? Also, bow distribution. I noticed that everything that Veronica did was mo a, a lot of stuff that was down here could have been up here. I think you know, you know, you know, up here for to to create more contrast in a way, more variety. Yeah, more variety. What do you think? I I would say it's 
it's about i think i think it's a good i think it's a good feedback to have like a kind of variety of 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 color and attack and articulation throughout the throughout the fugue mm -hmm. that the that the soft that, that there's some statements of the theme that are soft and some that are loud you want to have a, like a big range of contrast mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you know about playing at the tip that's a subject um where if you get if you get really intense about it um you know with uh, uh if you if, if you play like with a baroque bow then you're kind of more like in the middle oh. and so there was a time there was a you know there was this time and I'm actually the first bach that i listened to when I was little and when when I was listening to Baroque music when I was when I was growing up played this way that it was like oh. you know that's sort of that sort of playing and right the old school, <laughs> got the old school of, method but yeah yeah right it was like everything was at the tip like uh, um, now people have gone uh, again to a bit more this this kind of playing and I think it comes from experience of trying a Baroque bow and being like, wait a minute, the only way I can actually have a Baroque bow here. Once oh, you have a Baroque bow, excellent. I do have a Baroque bow. Um, the thing with a Baroque bow, and this, it, it, it was kind of revelatory to, to, to me in some ways, um, is, you, I mean, you can, you can play like this. Right. But it's fairly hard to control. Uh -huh. Most of the time, you're probably going to be in this area. Right. And it's, it has a certain lightness to it. And I think that after I played on it for a little bit, when I used my modern bow again, I found I actually like used it. Um, I found myself looking for that sound and art articulation that I was enjoying in the Baroque bow. Oh. And one thing that's kind of interesting about playing with a Baroque bow is that it, it forces you to play with full hair. Like you just can't. Oh, on I the mean, side, you can't do it on the, yeah, 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 yeah. If you play on the side, you will have no control it won't speak it, it'll be it'll be quite difficult i mean maybe once in a while it can work mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. most of the time it has to be like flat hair right 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 and um and that too is actually kind of a uh, can it can be kind of a almost like a good exercise because then when you play bach again with the modern bow you find actually maybe a similar type of right Type, 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 type of song. Right, right, um, right. So that's uh, anyways, that's going that's going deep in there with the uh, with yeah, the research. To, I, I know you know, you know you're uh, into the next level when you own a baroque bow. I myself do not own a baroque <laughs> bow. I own, well, I own I a vegan bow though. Year. I have I have a bow that's uh, completely uh, you know vegan friendly. So uh, I <laughs> it doesn't help me play. Wait, ball. what does that mean? It means that it doesn't have coarse hair. Or? <laughs> Yeah, it, they I'm actually use. Uh, out, that... they, it, it's actually like um, made of Hemp. composite. Yeah, synthetic, synthetic hair. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, yeah. So it's um, that's another thing. But uh, yeah, that's, that's great. Cool. That's great. I, I thought that that there. Yeah. That then it's a different method. I would say that the style it's to to have here, but then to sort of roll more because somehow it needs to. Like I felt mm. like the chords, yeah, were a little bit could get yeah. crunchy, and that's that's a problem that a lot of us have with that with that particular fugue. Yes, it's the it's the thing that when you're playing always the three note chords all together, that then we hear that crunch at the start. Right, right, right. Very break three note chords together without too much crunch. I think sometimes uh, if you pick the chords that I learned, Little more emphasized, and you break those, and maybe you break those. That if you switch it up, that it's not always that we don't hear so many of the crunches. Uh -huh. uh, uh, that can be a maybe also a, also a strategy. But nice, uh, nice. Well, you know what's interesting, and this will make everyone feel better about the Bach fugues, <laughs> is apparently when Bach was showing these pieces to visitors. You know, somebody would come through through town uh, in uh, wherever he was, Kutten, uh, and uh, and he was like, look at these violin pieces that I, that I wrote, these fugues. But then he played them on the harpsichord for them. Uh, he didn't actually like take out his violin and play it on the violin. He like demonstrated the, the violin fugue on the harpsichord. Uh -huh. uh, so it wasn't necessarily something, you know, it's, we, 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 we know that Bach was a violinist. And so sometimes we think like, well, he must have been the most amazing violinist ever to play these pieces. But I think he really 
you know, he wanted to re really wanted to write polyphonic music, mm. but then it wasn't necessarily something that a lot of people could play back then. You know, I think it was right. It, 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 it really went like up to the limit of what people thought was even possible. He, 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 in a so way, he, he was like the just Paganini the of his time to test the limits of, of, this, of the instrument, probably. He really, yeah, I think he wanted to see just how, how polyphonic, like how many voices can I, can I create in a solo violin piece? Mm. Uh, and this is where all the, the challenges come from, where, where we're, still try, we're basically still trying to solve it. And everyone who plays these pieces well finds like a slightly different solution. Uh, right. But it's, uh, you know, for, for, for Bach, when he wanted to show someone how good the piece was, he actually sat at the harpsichord and just... Right, right. Oh, that's so... <laughs> <made it there. laughs> what, a, what, a, what, a, what a way. He should have just flexed, brought his violin. He probably could not. Um, but uh, that's, <laughs> that's great. Anyway, wanted to quickly move on. Thank you, Veronica, for your submission. The next person we have here is oh andrea and she's 15 years old uh she's going to be playing the sarasate segunda vice this one is only a one minute video so uh take it away <laughs> probably the most use out of a fourth finger that I have ever witnessed in that piece. <laughs> it was like very, a lot of fourth finger usage. Well, you know, it, there, are some, there are some violinists who really love, love the fourth finger and they seem to, a lot of them seem to have made fingerings for in additions that I <laughs> So I, I noticed that Carl Flesch and Dino Francescati, they must have they must have had long, long and strong fourth fingers. Every like high note, right? It's always on, right, right, always right. on four. Is there so, is there anything you know if you're you say, if you're one of those people? Great. Is there anything you would say to uh, to her? Like how could she improve? Like that particular. You passage? know, my tip that first run. The, like, I'm, I, I mean, maybe I won't play it now. <laughs> <laughs> I will be your student, um, Augustine. Let's just tell me what to do. What would you What would you like? What would you? What, how would you tell tell us to to do in that in that particular run? Is, I, I think the. Okay, got it. Well, that one was that one was great. Oh. I think this one. So I think I would break it break it up in your practice. You know, when you have a huge when you have a huge run like this, taken on its t taken in its in its entirety, it's super difficult it's a ton of notes right. so you want to kind of break it well, up what's your, what's your fingering and just, by the way i want to see I, I what's your fingering what, what? start oh my, I, I don't well they're kind of weird so oh you go three three four and then and then you put a fourth finger then, down oh no three no, again i go three. Oh, i do a, three just because i'm i do uh because i'm super i'm super uh, uh creative i do like one two one two one two one two one two one two and then three. <laughs> yeah. So, but obviously. Well, you know, if it's, that's not very. Everyone intuitive. personalizes their fingerings eventually a little bit. The danger with having too much two one two, one two one two is that eventually it can sound kind of like. It can. Uh, yeah. It you know. Yeah, yeah. Like it's, it's hard when you when you repeat the same combination too many times, then it's hard to still be accurate because the intervals keep switching this is why i like to break it up but ah. the idea that i would just suggest is to go for the cleaner break up the run, run to not always start it here but actually start it right okay 
and then start putting it back together. Mm -hmm. um, so in a Smart way, practicing guys, it's almost like you, you've you've broken it up into smaller problems. Mm -hmm. Each one of them is not so difficult, mm -hmm. and once each one of those is solved really well, then you start putting them together again, right? And then you have the right, whole right, thing right. again, rather than trying to always play the whole thing. Is um, what makes it slightly more difficult. This is just something that applies to any time you've got something, some super crazy intense passage where a lot of stuff is happening. Right. Um, if you uh, break it down into small things, each of which is not so complicated, right, right, and right. then put it back together. It's, I actually this became clear to me when I was. Uh, I'm kind of you know I, I like puzzles, and I was doing the Rubik's cube. Uh, oh. And. And I suddenly saw this parallel because the whole idea about how the Rubik's cube is solved, you know, basically it's it's the puzzle. I don't have I don't have it right okay. here. But it's a puzzle where um, there are billions of combinations. So a human mind can't figure out a solution just to the given situation. It, 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 so uh, taken as a whole, the problem is not possible. The way that it's it's solved is that it's split up into steps. Mm -hmm. Like you solve one side and then you solve like the middle pieces, like there are some people who do corners first and then the, the edge pieces and there are different systems for it. But basically you split it up into smaller problems, mm -hmm. like five or six steps. Each one of those is still maybe difficult, but it's solvable. There are only, mm -hmm. there's a limited number of combinations it can have. I mean, that's how a computer solves and, stuff. Like yeah. it breaks it into the most like zeros and ones, right? You could say that at the yeah. core. Step by step. Yes, yeah, step little by, by little. step. Yeah. And then the people who do it really fast, the Rubik's Cube, it's because they, they do only three steps and they've memorized just thousands of combinations of, of possible sequences and combinations it can have. The people who do it slower, but it's much easier, is if you've broken it up into six. And as a result, it takes you a little, it takes you more turns like to do. But... This is uh, the, just the parallel. I mean, I don't want to take this an analogy too far, but the parallel to violin playing is just that uh, also there are things that you see someone someone do something and you think, whoa, that's impossible. Mm -hmm. No way that mm -hmm. can be done. How, how is this person doing right. it? But actually to that person, it doesn't feel that way because they've, uh, they've like solved one portion of it after another and then eventually it's put together at and hangs together, mm. um, but but it's not like they they just played the whole thing over and over until it was perfect. Right, it's, right. it's that they that they like fixed all the little right, right. The parts of it. Um, so guys, listen to yeah. to Augustine. You know, whenever you have a piece that's like it seems like it's unapproachable just because of its massive scale, just break it down into you know chewable pieces. You wouldn't just eat a whole. <laughs> you know, like sandwich <laughs> or whatever, all in one go, you would probably, I mean, maybe I would, but, yeah. <laughs> but you would just, you know, or, or a giant steak or whatever you would, you would have it, cut it into little pieces, consumable pieces, and then eat it. So that's, that's, um, that's something I think that's very valuable. Thanks for that. And thank you for that submission. All right, moving on. We have next, we have Nathan who's 20 years old and he's going to be playing Oh Monty Chardash.
for the fast part. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, well, that's 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 all right. But um, what do you, what do you think? I, and I love Nathan that you uh, put your video in front of uh, what seems like your garage gym. It's like that. What a flex! <laughs> he's just like. He's just, that's literally the definition of flexing is to play Chardash in front of your home, in front of your home <laughs> <Exactly>. gym. <laughs> what do you have to say, Augustine? What do you, what do you think? Oh, I thought that sounded, I thought that sounded very, very good. There is, there is something about that, that kind of, that kind of style, that kind of gypsy music that, um, is so like overly expressive. It's almost like it's, it's. It's almost like the music is like crying or sobbing, right? It's like, oh, 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 yeah, oh, right, right, right. Yeah. And I think the more you can kind of bring that out, uh, the, the better. It's oh, yeah. All right. That's right. I, I don't understand I mean, what you're saying, Augustine. You're just going to have to show us, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, the kind of... Um, that, that is... <laughs> something in the sound maybe Ooh, maybe like a very yeah. it's kind of a very intense vibrato it's like mm, oh, yeah. everything is everything is kind of incredibly intense expression you know uh, these kinds of i talk a lot about suspensions i think i'm already uh, sometimes uh, I, I annoy people it's with okay. that but we're, we're all nerds here this you know things that are leaning that that are dissonances these uh, that always act moments you maybe want to make like little little swells on those i there was one thing i noticed which is when there is this there's this like outburst where it, uh where it goes up right <laughs> I think you can take it. I think you can take it to, to the the resolution. I noticed that it always was stopping here, but uh, and then the next one. Uh, then the next one is the one that I think then becomes more um, maybe re resigned. I don't know. You have to. You have to. Think about the the call and response, this, right? Like the the, the, the like, cause yeah. and effect, yeah, of of each one, yeah. Do yes. You, it's by the way, I wanted to know: statement. do you like do you uh, do do you like do any ornamentation? And, you know, maybe the first time, and then um, you know the second time. You know, this kind of stuff. Or like, wait, uh, or uh, like a cool intro. Do you, do you do any of that kind of like uh, different things? Like, you know, gypsy it up. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's a great idea in this in this style. If you, um, it's it kind of fits fits the style. I think you don't want to go overboard so much that we can't fall that we can't like follow the, the you know, the journey of the of the theme, mm -hmm. but. Especially in the repeat, it, it, we've already heard it once, and so if you add some of those like nice touches you just demonstrated, I think it can, uh, yeah, it can definitely, uh, it can fit the style. I mean, ultimately, this is uh, this is gyps gypsy music with which which uh, lives from that kind of ornamentation. You know, like if you look at Zigeuner mm. Weisen, for example. Right, right, right. Right. But I mean, I think All like Chardash then, is yeah. so, it's it's honestly a little bit bare bones, whereas Zygona Weissen has been kind of fully fleshed out. Don't you think? It's like, well, cause it's room. Because Zygona Weissen is, yeah, because Zygona Weissen is for uh, like four classical musicians by a classical musician. So he he kind of like writes everything in. Right. Um, I actually think sometimes in Zygona Weissen, the danger is if you take that, and then do even more, then it can sometimes be right, right, right. too yeah. much because no, he already no adds more, put yeah. so much into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I agree with but you. But yeah, you're right that Chardash, you basically have just the melody. It doesn't have all those uh, all those little improvisatory moments uh, yet. Right. So you do, you can add some. Yeah, yeah. What, what, are, what are some of your, uh, that, that you add? 
Let, let's exchange. Let's exchange some improv ideas here on the. Uh, now recently, I've been getting into improv. I've been trying to improv. I've been putting uh -huh. like a little bit of a. Yesterday, I had just a little session in Discord. Uh, for those of you who are interested, you can join our Discord. The link is in the description below. Um, but um, I was putting some, you know, drones and stuff like that. And then I would just play over it, some guitar stuff that, uh, you know, guys, check out Alan Gogo, by the way. Um, it's an amazing guitarist. I was just jamming to his album. I was starting with uh, non, of course, not like I was going into more of the kind of easy listening style uh, of stuff. And then I was, and, and even some lo fi stuff later on. But like, just trying to get, how, how are you with improv, uh, in the moment improv? Are you, are you, is that something that you're, very comfortable with Augustine. I was I was always curious about other classical musicians to that. It's interesting. I think when I was growing up, I was actually pretty comfortable with it. I would sometimes sit down at the piano and just make stuff up. And and as I've worked more, more and more, I think this happens to a lot of classical musicians as we work more and more intensely on these pieces, just right, and you know, like uh, then. It be, it becomes like more and more terrifying to do something suddenly totally uh, unmanious that you haven't that you haven't prepared for. So I'm I'm not somebody who like um, improvises regularly. Although of course, like if I'm going to like write a cadenza or something like that, mm -hmm. you know, I start by yeah yeah playing around and improvising right. and things like this. But to like stand in front of people and just and just be like, okay, let's go. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, it's not something I I, <laughs> that, I do on a regular that's, basis. So, that's so my good, goal. good for you for doing that's that. That's my must, goal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I really want to be able to do that. I thought like after you know through quarantine, I want to be able to at least at least not not become like I would never measure up to you know like we we do things differently as classical musicians, but uh, at least in a sort of sense, you know, I'll never forget. We've all seen the Grappelli Menuhin video, and I'll never mm. forget watching them. And for the very first time, and then thinking, man, Menuhin is good. I admire him so much, but he's a little stiff. You could tell he's scared in that in that video. Well, you know, the thing is that somebody like Stefan Grappelli, I, I, I love his recordings with Django Reinhardt and all these, all these, uh, everything, everything he did. But that takes so many years to have to to gradually develop your improvisation skills. Basically, what it is, it's not actually like, I mean, jazz musicians, it, it's not like they're literally making up every note as they're on stage. They're drawing on years of experience of basically accumulating right. music, like right. turns of phrases. Right. And, They've memorized and all of course, the things, just like your Rubik's Cube example. They've memorized <laughs> all the all the different possibilities, right? They, yeah, they, they have... A lot of different well basically there's a grid there's a harmonic grid right that you have and you know like now you're in this key now you're in that key and then with within that key because they've for years and years they've been improvising uh they have things to like f to to draw on like like that, that there is already something in their in in their brain that they can draw draw on uh, where to put the fingers and 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 do stuff that sounds really really cool and uh, will sound awesome with the rhythm and it's it's something that's very hard to suddenly start from from zero it might it might take you know just as much time as it took Stefan Grappelli to get good at it which mm. was probably he probably did that for years and years and years until he could do it and look so relaxed look so cool while doing yeah. it you know just basically it, it almost sounds uh like carefree you know like like so um it, it, that's part of what makes that music so delightful right. um, is that you don't it doesn't look like he's sweating there panicking like what am I going to do next you know it, you never have yeah. that feeling it's um, no, he's... so that takes that takes many years um, right. and in a in a way it's 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 hard for us because it's in a way a, such a difficult way of playing everything is about um, you know it's, it's a very very steady beat and and it's about not playing things the same. It's not really about playing things like 
perfectly with perfect sound all the time. Right, right. Yeah. It's it's more about. I mean, the, you're improving. You just uh, you're just yeah. rolling with it. Oh, are you gonna yeah. are you gonna show us some improv? Is that what you were reaching over for? What were you reaching over? No, for? I was actually closing the. Case, but what? So. Closing the what? No thanks. No what? <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're moving on to our next one. Um, I think this is the last submission uh, we have today. This one is by oh this okay. Prutznol, and he's playing Vinyaski, Scherzo Tarantale. Snell is 17 years old. He's, uh, you know, we call him pretzel on the server, or at least I call him pretzel. I don't think, yeah. Well, some other people do as well. Anyway, very talented, as you can see. What do you, uh, what do you have to say? Any advice, tips? Well, it's great. <laughs> I think it's, uh, yeah. It's. I think. I think it's not. I think it's not very good. I have two. I have two fingering tips. I don't know if this is uh, too. This is too detailed, but when you do. Things like substitutions, where you went, we went on the first finger and then you go three. Yeah. I would try to always be make it one two or two three. Yeah. To not they're next jump. to each other. Yeah. Yeah. That then next to each other because with substitutions, there's always a danger that you're going to hear that you're going to hear like the yeah. The, it's too much of the, a the, the, too much of a yeah a jump. Yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah. That you. You might hear the shifting noise unless they're right next to each other. Then it can be a very, uh, very useful technique. Yeah. Um, uh, so I noticed. I noticed that. I, I, I. Uh, you know, there's this moment when it goes all the way up on the D string. Yeah. <laughs> that that thing, and I I saw that too in the edition that I have. Uh, I I saw that fingering and I immediately said, no. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's. Uh, that particular I mean, I think it's an interesting yeah. idea. Yeah. Um, I I would just um, I would just go just on the A string. Oh. And it, and it can still be this 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 second statement of the theme. This way can can still be like extra sweet, like mm -hmm. dolce. Mm -hmm. You know, a little bit more uh, a different color mm -hmm. than the first time, mm -hmm. but. Um, uh, but I wouldn't go all the way, maybe up on the on right, the right, right, right. Um, By the way, I want to just, just point out something, yeah. guys. Um, when you notice Augustine's like left hand, I want you guys to notice that how just curved over, uh, he's just ready to place his fingers at any given moment on the on the fingerboard. That's just something that I've noticed, and and that definitely is very ah. economic and and, 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 to and, this. and that's yeah, yeah. that's very good. You don't want fingers like flying like this. Sometimes I see some of these mm. videos that you guys are submitting and you're you're having you're pulling back fourth fingers, you're you're doing this kind of stuff. It's it's fine, but you have so much further to reach the yeah. fingerboard. Keep them close. And it affects your intonation and all that kind of stuff. So make sure you keep Keep everything very close and very concise. Almost be ready to like 
like it's like a a, a radar yeah. a scanner that the finger the tip of the finger is ready to just drop on the on the right moment yeah. sorry sorry Augustine for I just wanted to, I just it actually, marveled at how yeah. how much you were well how well you were representing that idea that, that, that's a very this is a very very good uh, good advice and I think it also helps reduce tension because when you're when you're making extra unnecessary movements then you're putting more, even more strain on the left hand you know it's already doing so much um so much hard work but actually talking about maybe avoiding extra work i always wonder why this this place when you and when you're going all the way down to the first position you have such an enormous shift it can actually make me make sense to go play this one on the a string and then mm -hmm. so in other words yeah if you're gonna travel that huge distance, you might as well like make an intermediate stop for the so sorry, sorry, sorry. so to the, the right, right, right. first string, second string, second string, third string, um, and overall it'll be more for the for the hand. Wow! Um, I can almost stretch it. That is so. Those um, so, they're but, so clean. So it's it's from E Street. I actually. I haven't played, I, I learned this piece when I was like 11 and then I didn't play it again. So I can't even yeah. remember what the fingerings are. <laughs> but so the idea is that instead of going to the first finger on the A, on the E string, yeah. you go, you kind of stretch down to the A string, oh, no, which is a 10th below the higher note. So it's just, oh, okay. Yeah. And then what's the next Yeah. One? Uh, well, that depends where you are in the piece, but... Yeah. Or... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, wow, wow. That's a good, that's a good, uh, good so advice. Can sometimes... Uh, like, sometimes when you think about, uh, like a difficult passage, the, the fingers have to travel so far, and then you think, well, is there a way to kind of, like, make it, make this motion, this huge motion, a little more fluid or enable the hand to move slower it'll increase accuracy mm. sometimes there are uh but you know i i sometimes i wonder whether the people who write in these fingerings even if they're famous people <laughs> yeah. uh whether they didn't write in like their a fingerings they wrote in like their b fingerings their, their bad fingerings not their oh yeah not just the to, fingerings that yeah they, right because they didn't want to give away their secrets guys by the right. way um augustine <laughs> does these amazing <laughs> talking about giving away secrets now I'm just joking but like it just reminded me that Augustine uh, is such a generous person I mean not only today here uh, sharing his experiences and his tips and advice but also on his Instagram uh, and um, so guys check that out um, ask Augustine there are some amazing uh, tips and, and things that, that, that he gives out and so generous actually wanted to um, just keep things moving because I love this discussion. I could keep you, we could have you here all day, but I don't want to take too much of your time. Um, <laughs> so I wanted to just say that we've gotten to the part where uh, we, we've reviewed your playing videos, but now uh, people, people's submissions, but now it's time to sort of take a look at one of uh, the guests' videos. And I always do this every week and uh, I chose this video uh, that you, it was a video of you at the Indianapolis uh, violin competition from way back when I first heard you. And I was just like, wow, you're playing the Vinyaski Polonaise and it is just so, uh, so incredible. I feel like the sound, you were, what, how old were you? Like 20 or, or, or 19 or something like that? Uh, I was, uh, I was 22. 22. Actually, uh, yeah, I was the oldest person in the, in the semi-final, which, um, or at least in the finals, uh, as, which, uh, which I was shocked, which I was shocked about, uh, that somehow that year that was, uh, everyone was, made me feel really old. <laughs> the first time maybe that I felt like, wow, I got old. Oh, well, you don't have to, <laughs> no, it, it, it shows in, I think it shows in the maturity of your playing. And I'm like, come on, 22, that's not old. Let's, let's be honest. Um, no. To win a competition of that scale. Now, it's, yeah. yeah, it's every four years. It's right up there. You know, it's, it, it's, it's an amazing competition. Um, and, and, you know, it put, put you, uh, for me at least, right up there with all the greats. So, so you know, I wanted to, to show this. Uh, and also just to get your thoughts and ideas about what would you do differently? I mean, 
I think it's not about uh, it being better. Well, I mean, it, 10 years is a long time, but, uh, or over 10 years now. But, um, you know, what, what would you do differently now? I, I'm, I'm curious. So here we go. Mm. This is uh, the, let's see here. Oh, gosh. Did I, okay. Did I make a boomer move? I may it? have made a boomer move and like <laughs> just lost this. Where is this file? Hang on a second. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, let's see. This is boomer move number four, but I am going to find it because I am determined. Oh, you know what? Did I like never? Oh, <gasps> I just never exported the file. Okay, we're going to watch another video while I export that file and hopefully my computer doesn't <laughs> okay. crash. This is uh, your more recent video. This is the introduction in Tarantella. That's amazing. And actually, uh, you know, I'm covering, I'm covering the, uh, the, 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 the pianist, the pianist. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta give credit to the pianist, right? How could we, how could we just, how could we just, guys, like always remember when you are uh, doing a compilation video or any kind of thing like that, the pianist is so important. So we gotta give, we gotta give some, uh, credit to the pianist here. So this time I was, I realized I was covering the pianist in the, uh, in the corner there. So I'm just gonna get rid of myself over there uh, so you won't see me. And then we're gonna play a little bit of this uh, so you can see who the pianist is. We need to have a, just a, a, a yeah, there's, um, here we go. <laughs> who is that? <laughs> oh. Nice, very nice. So anyway. Just wanted to show you guys that. That was, uh, I thought it was so incredibly talented. As if 
you weren't talented enough already, Augustine, on the violin. You just had to go and flex on all of us and just, you know, you're like, I, I, I could just do this myself. <laughs> um, how is that? How is that to, to, to that process? Could you, could, you, could you tell us a little bit about that? I mean, did you do the violin uh, part first or the piano part? I mean, what was that like? Uh, you know, for this one, I actually did the violin part first because there are these uh, passages where the violin plays by itself. But I actually, for um, I've made a lot of these videos and usually I actually do the piano part first. Okay. Because I, when I play the piano part, I, I, I know how I want to play the violin part. So in a way, it's going to, it, it's not, it's in a way easier for me to play the piano part in such a way that it'll fit with my violin part than it might be for uh, another pianist. And it gives me like a kind of, um, I don't know, it gives the music like a, a really, a really nice foundation when I play the violin part. And I think the whole thing sounds, feels good. But in this case, I did the violin part first and then have headphones for the piano part. And I got pretty mad at myself actually in a few places because of, uh, you know, when I like speed up or like do, do some, I was like, oh, come on, can't, why can't this violin play more? <laughs> <laughs> but, so I understand where sometimes... Uh, so you, were, you, you know, were you actually it's, it's frustrated for... by your own playing as you were... Did you sympathize more with pianists out there? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, <laughs> I sympathize with pianists that... Ha or like I have a lot of admiration for pianists who, um, who play this kind of piece and play it really well um it takes takes an enormous amount of empathy of like you have to you have to totally get into the into the world of the person you're playing with and uh and there's some pianists who can you can still somehow play it play it beautiful play it beautifully and make beautiful art of, of it out of a piano part that's kind of like not i mean this, let's face it this is not like the greatest the world's greatest piano part you know it's not the frank sonata it's okay, but could of, you uh, do? Do you have the skills? Do, what are your piano skills? Just so you can, you know, flex on us, make us feel a little bit more insecure. Uh, no, I'm joking. But well, what, what are your piano skills like? Can you? What's like the? What? Where? Do, how long did you play piano for? Because I think we all learn piano, but I, I mean, I don't. I can't play hmm. like accompany myself like that. Well, I used to play a lot of piano. So I, I, I started the violin when I was five, and the piano when I was seven. Mm -hmm. And there was a while when I actually played as much piano as violin, or maybe I even spent actually more time on the piano, but it was not my first instrument. Mm. So the violin was the one, it was the instrument I was best at, and I had really great teachers mm. on the violin. Mm. The piano, I didn't really take piano lessons. Like I, I learned a lot from like watching pianists I played with, and I had a lot of fun like looking at the repertoire because there's such great piano music, like from Sch Chopin and Beethoven sonatas and Scarlatti mm. and like there's so so much incredible music written for the piano. Uh, so I had a great playing that and it was kind of what I did for fun uh, in, a, in, in a way. But I actually before this this whole lockdown started, I didn't really play piano. I barely played piano for the last 10 years. Mm. Uh, and it was something I had been, uh, but you know, I was really focusing on violin and uh, in, in a way, I think my violin te technique got better because my mind was so much on uh, focused on it. But then uh, when I, when this started again, I, I mean, this is not like a great piano. It's like this, you know, electric piano, but I was like, great, I can finally play some piano again. And I started playing piano and that's when I had this idea because I was really missing playing with other people. And, mm -hmm. but you know, playing with other people online is so hard. <laughs> it's, you, you can't get anything together. It's really, really, it's a huge challenge. Right, right, right. And that's when I suddenly discovered that accompanying myself was actually, um, the way to go, somehow, the way to go. Yeah. Strangely enough, it's actually easier. And, and it was a chance to play some pieces, uh, that's, uh, you know, I wouldn't otherwise. So I've had, I've had a good time, but that's great. It, I've learned some things because when I when I did the accompaniment, listening to myself on the violin, I noticed also a lot of things I did with the violin part that I wasn't aware of. So it can, you know, I actually, it, despite no matter what your piano level is, uh, you know, no matter how good you are at piano, just uh, looking through the piano parts of works for violin and piano and 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 playing through, even if it's slow, you will always learn you will always learn a lot, like mm. a lot of valuable information that will help your violin playing also. So I, I recommend it no, no matter how, uh, how skilled you are at piano, just to, uh, 
to go through it and kind of look. Right, and, and, and vice versa as well. For, for violinists to look at the piano parts, of course, that is something that we are always told to do, looking at reading scores. But just to reinforce that out there as well, that you can never... Uh, learn too much and, and have too much knowledge at your disposal. Uh, by the way, I, um, I finally got it together. Uh, so I am going to... Uh, right. right, here we go. It is a little Augustine. And I'm just going to... I didn't uh, manage to cut it before, so I'm just going to cut it at some point. So here we go. Wait, what, what is this? Okay. You know what? Oops. I'm just gonna do this right now and uh, all right. here we go. Okay, we're gonna start this again. So that never happened and we're going back <laughs> in there and I'm going to show you guys little Augustine. This is small Augustine playing at the Indianapolis Violin Competition and he's playing the uh, Vinyaski's Polonaise. Brilliant. Two years old, guys. That's amazing. Oh, incredible. I'm, I mean, that sound is just so mature. And, you know, think about that. I was about, gosh, how old was I around then? What year was that again? 2006. 2006. So, okay, I just moved over to the States. I was just starting at Curtis. And, um, yeah, my self-esteem was both crushed and inspired at the same time when I, when I watched <laughs> that performance. It was just so incredible. Um, guys, by the way, if you want to check out more of Augustine's videos and stuff, go check out his YouTube. The links are in the description below. Also his Instagram. There's so many insightful things. If you like what you heard today, make sure you check that out. Um, but yeah, Augustine, thank you for, um, for being there for us. And um, what would you do differently uh, now? Well, I think the main thing that's changed and why it's so interesting for me to see it now is that I have so much more experience performing. And at the time, I was so nervous when I played. It didn't sound like it. In, the, in each round. This was at the end of the semifinals. So I had, I, I, in the semifinals, I played the Bartok solo sonata and uh, the first Beethoven sonata and the mod commissioned modern piece. So it was this huge thing. And then at the end, the Wieniawski. So at that point, I was feeling quite quite happy, but still there was this excitement. So the main thing that's different now is I think that I breathe more in the music, that sometimes I just like let the music breathe, just take a little, take a little breath, take a, take a moment, sometimes let it relax. Uh -huh. And back then everything was like happening at lightning speed. I was just so- um, you, you, were, you were younger, so you, your brain moved faster. <laughs> <laughs> everything was, <laughs> uh, and I was also doing uh, I mean, I'm doing fingerings there in that video that are insane, that make absolutely no sense, you know, like that I'm, that I'm jumping from like three to the third finger and like things that are, are actually unnecessarily hard, uh, but somehow that I would never do now, that maybe I couldn't even do now, like, it, but that's, 
uh, that wasn't my problem then. Mm-hmm. But the problem was uh, what I was struggling with was just like, yeah, ner- nerves. I, I didn't have this experience wow. playing in front of people, and I didn't know like how to breathe and relax myself and find uh, find moments to take time. Wow, wow. Music. amazing! But you know, it was it was. Uh, it was one of the happiest moments of my life, you know, when uh, when I won partially because I knew in that instant that I never have to do another competition. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, yeah, the same I was just... for me as well. <laughs> yeah. I know that feeling. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Gosh. But competitions it's... are great. I mean, for those of sure. th- those people out there, I mean, yes, competitions are but... like the way to, to, to put yourself out there, um, um, and, and gain performance experience, right. In front of, in front of people. I think otherwise most of us don't have that opportunity to perform, but it's, they're definitely, they're definitely really important. And, you know, you, we, we, we have, we have to do them, but there was a, there was just a relief because I found it so hard to play in a competition mm. and so much more natural somehow to play in front of an audience just you know to like make music with people for people instead of like competing against other musicians mm-hmm. i found that to be to be like just yeah. just it, tough yeah. and this feeling of being judged and uh, you know i it was uh it was just like finally i i i can just play uh you can play, uh, with, yeah, without just play concerts. Kind of, yeah, 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 yeah. Where people want I mean, to hear you, right? They're there for you, right. rather than like, oh, let's see how this person plays, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, like, that's great. Minus two points because there was a, <laughs> an E string whistle. Wasn't well, it? You know, like what that's... Bartok said: competitions are not for musicians; they're for horses, or something like that. Wasn't that a famous <laughs> Bartok quote? And yet, and yet, yeah, you know, like both it. of us here, where we were. Our careers were born from competitions. I mean, I, I don't know what to how to react when someone comes you, at me with are that. You're calling quote. me a horse. Yeah, <laughs> we're both horses apparently. So it's so all good. <laughs> I mean, anyway, but um, yeah, I just oh my gosh, we are so over time. But I mean, as long as you're cool with it, I'm cool with it, and I think the uh, the chat sure. is definitely cool with it too. But um, you know, I asked Augustine guys, I asked Augustine what his most um, inspiring video was on YouTube, and uh, he asked yeah. me, okay. Uh, is the oyster track one? We said we already did the oyster track one. You know, we did that with Noah. Oh, and I already showed the Claire de Lune. The, yeah, okay. And and what about the Mills? Yeah, I did that already. Okay. So, what what else is there? And then he came up with this video. <laughs> so I just want you guys to there is there is it is this is a pretty interesting video. It's it is very inspiring, and we had a lot of fun uh, watching it. So I'm gonna guy uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you. This is. Chardash, so we're back to Chardash, but uh, a slightly different kind of Chardash.
It's very over the top. <laughs> I just can't. I just can't. My God. I love this video. That, yeah. <laughs> that is so hilarious. Um, wow. Uh, I, I don't even know what to say. Maybe Nathan will enjoy it. Will enjoy that. Actually, he did. You know, even though it's on the Ocarina. Yeah, Ocarina. <laughs> it's, um, it's, uh, he has a kind of like, there's a passion inside this guy, right? Like the Absolutely, way that he, yeah. the way that he plays, it sounds totally like, like a voice, the kind of shapes he makes, the kind of emphasis he gives. So in a way, even though it's, you know, I mean, it's really, really funny to play this piece on the ocarina. It, I, I actually find it one of the most, like, somehow effective and expressive childishes. And I found myself actually listening to it. And like first, I listened to it a bunch of times because I thought it was hilarious. And then I found myself going back to it because I actually thought, there's things about it that are just so great yeah he's really know, well thought like, yeah. out like he's even his action it's super smooth it's everything is mm. has a musical reason actually as well as a as a show kind of thing right <laughs> that's so cool <laughs> thank you for sharing thank you for sharing that with us um we're going to quickly get to some uh ask augustine questions because we uh had for those of you who are wondering uh we had question and video submissions both on the rachel violin reddit as well as uh the rachel violin discord and so we have weekly offstage guests special guests um and so you can check back in with us to see who's next week's guest but now we have some um, uh, questions. Here we go. First question is, okay. First, I wanted to ask, uh, say that your IG series, Ask Augustine, is incredibly helpful. It is a treasure trove of information that has originally already helped me figure out so much about my playing and my violin that I want to fix. Uh, thank you for making these posts. My question is about one of your one of your Instagram posts about finding your own fingerings in music. I also have a short pinky. But when I try to rework fingering, some people say that I am not only creating more work for myself, but I'm also changing the sound. How do you balance like ease of playing and not compromising the sound in the piece? And that was asked by Molecular Violin. I, yeah, I think this is a, uh, it's a very good point that you want to find uh, the right balance between the two because mm -hmm. there are some fingerings that uh, produce a certain color for example when you when you make something maybe easier by playing it in first position instead of going up further high then you are, are changing the color so you want to you want to decide you want to ideally find fingerings that uh, create the sound that you want um, while also being efficient sometimes there are certain certain trade-offs. Um, I I would, if you can, I would prioritize the quality of sound. Okay. Uh, which is probably what the what 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 the teacher said. Mm -hmm. But um, if uh, but there are definitely some some cases, you know, when a certain fingering in the music that uses, you know, the fourth finger, for example, on a, on a, on a last high note, mm -hmm. you know, and if your pinky is short, that's really really difficult. And if you just rework the fingering slightly, you can easily end with three there, and it's gonna sound great and be a hundred percent easier. You know, like so that's that's the um, that's I think maybe the right the right the right way to your own fingerings. And as you become more and more experienced about creating your own fingerings, you'll get a sense of uh, of where you know where to draw the line and and right. and uh, um, you know I, I also I wouldn't. Not, sometimes I'm concerned. Maybe by saying that in my Instagram video, maybe I, 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 I'm not making people like give give people an excuse to like stop using their pinky. You know, you still need to train your pinky and like make sure that it 
can do the work, right. you know, like, I mean, you, you, you should be able to use it when you must and, uh, and, and have a good vibrato and like, it's important to keep it in shape mm -hmm. and exercise it. <laughs> exercise. Uh, what are some pinky exercises that uh, you would recommend? Are they just like regular studies uh, and etudes, that kind of stuff? Or what do you have to I, What to I recommend? usually do is actually, uh, I often warm up with some trills and oh. that trilling with, with the fourth finger, which is really difficult, yeah. kind of strengthens it a little bit. I mean, you don't want to, you don't want to hurt yourself. Don't go overboard, right. but just doing that regularly and also, uh, practicing like good vibrato with the fourth, with the fourth finger. It, it, I mean, for me, it definitely it's the finger that, mm -hmm. um, it's a little, where the vibrato is, is not quite as, it's not quite as easy and I keep it in shape this right, way. Right, right, right. Um, yeah. Uh, amazing. Okay. So next question we have is, uh, Hi, Augustine. I love your violin and piano self duos that you've been posting on YouTube recently. Can you talk more about your process for making those and how self duetting is different from playing live with other people? Is it? Well, see? so playing, playing with other people is, uh, is, is, is much better. Uh, there's, I think the best thing about being a violinist actually is that we're always playing with other people. There's like the social element of playing right. music together. Right. And this is something I find really inspiring and that I'm really, really missing. Mm. And I think that when you're in the same room with someone, uh, this, I become, I'm more aware of this than ever now, is that there are so many subtle little communications going on, like ways that you react to each other that are not necessarily about like showing the beats or something like that. It's, it's, it's much more subtle than that. It's just from the way you're listening, you know, it, it the brain processes the sound so fast that just like split second reactions to adjust together and play together. And when you're, um, you know, when you're doing socially distanced I performances become... where one person records a part and the other one records their right. part, you don't have any of this. And this is when we suddenly become aware how important like all those little chamber music adjustments are that when you just play a lot with other people, it becomes second nature to, yeah. to, to follow and lead in a certain, in, in a certain way. I mean, there's really nothing um, to replace that feeling yeah. of, 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 of human contact, even when you're standing yeah. in the same room, six feet apart versus trying to, cause you're, you're communicating. It's all those little microseconds that are happening. The, that that happened in the music that you're not even consciously aware of it's a subconscious thing that happens and you you just that's the beauty of music that's what makes it alive i think and and so i think yeah that's a it's a great question but i mean nothing beats nothing beats uh, the real live interaction right you know when you when you play with someone in the same room mm -hmm. you're aware of how they breathe also mm -hmm. and part of what how you play chamber music is by breathing together when you only hear the sounds over the headphones, you don't have that sense. Uh, right. So sometimes well, they're not even live. To... They're not yes. doing things right. Like yeah. they're, they're exactly. just. It's usually you just record it once through because you can't do it live because there's a there's a whole kind of delay thing. If we tried to play live now, which I've seen many people in the chat try to try to suggest to us, it just wouldn't work because by the time I hear Augustine's sound, it's just it's it's not together. So it's two seconds later, and then yeah. by the time I hear your sound, it's two seconds well, later. Yeah. So we would just. Before we know it, we'd be playing ten times as slow. Yeah, and, and even a, yeah. a millisecond, it's like those. It's noticeable. Yeah, it's noticeable. It's the kind of awkward, ooh, that kind of thing that that happens. So, so, um, but um, yeah. Anyway, moving on to the next question. Oh, this one was from uh, the subreddit. How do you structure your playing? Do you use a notebook or something like that to plan your practicing, or do you mostly go from what's in your head? Like, I guess, practicing when you decide to practice mm. each day. I personally struggle with keeping a logbook over my practicing for more than maybe two weeks at a time. And I write most things in my sheet music, but I often feel like I'd be more effective if I wrote things like the passages that I need to practice in a certain way down in a book. Then that way I can, you know, kind of return to uh, the next day in session. What do you, what do you, um, what do you, do you usually do that sort of stuff? I mean, I never, I never I do, usually but... just write things write things in the music yeah. and it gets messy because I eventually it's like, Oh, I want to practice that tomorrow. So I circle it. But then the next day I've already circled a passage. So then I, you know, I write in like an X and then I write a check mark. You know, eventually right. Are you using, a, covered and stuff. are you using an iPad by the way? <laughs> no, I, oh, I, I, use, I still like to use, um, 
I mean, I have an iPad. Right. And for some pieces, I, I use it. Because that would uh, especially solve if they're the not issue, turns. right? That would solve the issue. You can have the whole yeah. layers yeah. Of, of things. So actually, that's a good, that's a great suggestion. Way, um, one way, if you don't like having the logbook and the music, but you like writing things into music, is if you use an iPad, then you can create like layers of markings. So you can eventually be like, uh, you know, I don't want to go more than two weeks back, maybe. Mm. So you start deleting that layer, or it's like, let me just look at what I wrote yesterday, um, and you have it right there in the music. You can see exactly what you meant. Mm. You can still. You can like draw things and be much more express much more accurately what you actually meant than if you tried to write down. Right. Yeah. I think we've all back. got that yeah. music from, you know, when we were, let's say, kids that are like 10 years ago yes. or something. And it's just like black or filled with different colors. Yeah. Sometimes I've even seen music that has uh, like literally drawings of things yes. on it. It's pretty it's pretty funny. Um, and we've all got that uh, in our <laughs> bookshelves somewhere. It can. You know, it can be really fun when sometimes when I've taught master classes and and the student gives me the music and then I see certain places where there's like a heart drawn or like like little or like a skull, you know, because it's a hard passage. Uh, I, I always I always smile at that. Uh, yeah. It actually tells. Right, yeah, right, right. Really gets a lot. So so <laughs> so next uh, next one is. Um, hello, Augustine. I wanted to ask, how do you do your warm up and how much time do you take doing it? Yeah, that's a really good question. Actually, I'm curious as well about your warm up uh, kind of procedure. Well, it's so it's super important to warm up, especially as you get older. You can get tendonitis if you don't warm up. So this is uh, mm -hmm. very very important. Um, I didn't really warm up much when I was in my early twenties, but then uh, at some point I I. I had some uh, finger issues um, and they went away once I had developed healthier like uh, habits. So I don't like have a, like a routine like I'm gonna play an hour of scales or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. I usually start with something that's not too intense yet, either a slow passage mm -hmm. to kind of get the vibrato going, mm -hmm. or sometimes, as I mentioned, I do some trilling, okay. like not not crazy intense, but just to get get the blood flowing, get warm warm up the hand right. um, before I start playing something nice. more intense but but maybe 10 minutes mm. five to ten minutes oh, okay, okay. and then if i feel like the hand's working now then i start playing uh you know real music but i might not right away i'm not going to jump into uh the fifth caprice by paganini <laughs> i'm going to first right. maybe work on something else right. and once i'm really really totally warmed up then I tackle something. Right, right. That yeah, really that's 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 a good. That's probably what I do as well. I mean, I just usually play some Bach and slowly get yeah. into it, um, and and then tackle the more, uh, more, like difficult stuff or whatever. I never start with with something that's just right up there. Um, okay, uh, <laughs> okay. This at first made me laugh, and I wasn't going to include this question. Why do you practice? But <laughs> then I thought, you know, it's, it's actually a really good question because we all ask ourselves, what am I practicing for? Especially during this time right now, why do you still practice? What motivates you to practice? I, I, well, I feel like this is a question I ask myself like every day I practice like in my, in my whole life. <laughs> but <laughs> it's just so, it, it, the practicing part is not really fun. It's always, you, I feel like you need something to practice for. And mm -hmm. right now, it's hard to find the motivation, you know, like, uh, normally, what most same with you is that uh, there's a concert coming up, there's a rehearsal, we're going to do something. And so, you know, let's practice to get ready for that, like, clear goal. And so it's easy to find the motivation. You know, we, we have to, there's something to look right, forward to. Right. So in this time, I, I, I knew that I had to kind of create some goals for myself in the time with no concerts, with no, um, with no structure from outside, which is actually why I started making these videos and just decided, okay, I'm sorry, that the introduction time teller, or I'm going to make right this project, that project, I I'm going to learn this piece now. And right. Making little uh, short term goals for yourself has, yeah. has helped in making a checklist of those, of those things that you want to accomplish. Huh? Exactly. And the fact that I, there's almost like an expectation now that I'm going to post the video every two days. Uh, uh, and that, that somehow, uh, it actually has done, 
mean, it sounds it sounds silly, but it's done a lot uh, for me uh, in terms of motivation. My friend, you have caught on. I, I, let me tell you about that. That is the social media <laughs> bug, and it's a great thing. Um, <laughs> yes, you out there in the chat, I'm reading all your comments, and uh, I'm watching all of you. Uh, I know you're watching us too, but which, <laughs> and thank you for that. You know, you watching us, just as Augustine was saying, helps yeah, it keeps us motivated. It actually really yeah. does. Um, surprisingly enough. And that's why kind of why we, uh, I, I went ahead and we have this on discord, uh, the virtual practice room so that, you know, some people just, it, it helps to, I mean, when I was a kid, it helped when my mom was in the kitchen and she would be, or wherever in the living room or whatever, just sitting there chilling or doing mom stuff. And I'd just be practicing and, and, and it would just, was comforting to know that she was there. So on Discord, we've got these virtual practice rooms, which are really just voice chat rooms, but we've renamed them one to 12 and people have a limited amount of people who can be in there. Like let's say 10 or 15 people, people can be in there to, to practice and other people just listen to you practicing. And I think that that I'm so glad that you, that you Augustine, you also feel the same way that there it is easier when you have, a reason to practice it does make things easier and to have a goal in mind so I'm, I'm really glad that that also applies to someone as legendary as yourself <laughs> well you know when you're when you're studying then you have a teacher who who gives who also creates goals for you and you're like well i want to sound good the next time i play for for, for, for my teacher right. uh when for what's what was initially like the first few days of this what was hard for me is you know there is um uh, it's usually I, I get that from people i playing I, I play with or for the audience i play for so right right well this has been a we good are we are certainly taking inspiration from you and your comments today i think that a lot of us will will definitely myself i'm gonna run off into a practice room practice session later uh and and and, and put your advice okay. to 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 task uh, <laughs> so right. so thank you for that oh hello augustine <laughs> which is your favorite piece that ray plays <laughs> what do you mean like, like just my favorite composition or like my favorite performance of you yes or it's what? okay you don't have to answer that question this question i'm you know i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna show you i'm gonna show you this is about to become your favorite piece that i play remember the uh ah, ocarina okay. we're gonna have an ocarina battle guys i have ch okay, I challenge I brought, you I mine. augustine do you have your ocarina because you told me you have done right here i never you know, I, you just keep I, that I in never your go anywhere without what it. What the heck? Like, I never go anywhere without an ocarina. Why would I? Do you, I mean, so wait, you have <laughs> wait, you have an ocarina because you play the Ligeti Concerto, right? You have like four of them. Yes. Yeah, so the Ligeti Violin Concerto is this crazy piece. Uh, it requires four of the wind players to play ocarinas. Okay. And it's really hard to get the right set of ocarinas with the right pitches for orchestras. So I started, I, I got a set that I travel with um, and uh but i don't really play on them myself but anyway that's why i have uh okay. all right nice. <laughs> all right so um who's gonna go first you uh you or me well you're, pro you're probably gonna sound a lot better than me okay so maybe, I, need, maybe, I need i need I a little first. bit of help you i prepared it. here um because you know everyone knows the uh the the, the legend of zelda uh the, the theme the zelda's lullaby so i'm gonna I'm gonna go in here. I prepared the. I uh, just need the tabs just for one quick section. Okay, this is from a YouTube video. So okay, we need to. Okay. 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 We got this. We got this, Augustine. All right. You, yeah. You want it? You want it? You, you okay. I'll try. Okay. Okay. Sorry, that was terrible. I can't, okay. I can't tell if I got it's, that I can't tell if it's the bad internet or just I, I would never say it's the bad playing. It, it's never the bad playing. I think but... it was the bad playing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, here we go. Here we go. Okay, okay. let's see. <laughs> Wait, 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 I got, 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 
it's uh... it's it's surprisingly it's surprisingly hard. So I I realized that it's the trick is the thumbs that are covering the holes on the on the bottom is to have like a good seal with those because otherwise uh, your pitch gets distorted. Okay. okay. Better. That was that was really good. Uh, yeah, I, I got a, I got luckier this time. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. That's really good. I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna attempt uh, one more time. This is practice. <laughs> There's some uh, ocarina. Wow! I, I feel like this Getting looks kind of like a like a like a like a heart or something. It's like, doo -doo, doo -doo, oh yeah, doo -doo. Let me give you my heart. I thought uh, or some, some I don't know. <laughs> so, 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 never mind. That, that's that's dumb. Um, the, those are the things that 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 go goes in my mind when I <laughs> see this kidney or weird shaped thing. Uh, what are some other things that did you did you ever learn to play ocarina yourself since you? Since you carry it around in your pocket all the time, I mean, I don't actually carry it. <laughs> oh, Augustine, it's okay. You carry it around your ocarina in your pocket. I get it. It's like your favorite pet stone. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, it's okay. You don't have to well, shy. Well, you know, shy. actually, um, I mean, I, I initially just got it, got it for the piece. But I, the funny thing is, each one of these, uh, um, each ocarina has a pretty limited range. Um, just like, uh, I mean. Aside, unless you have like a really fancy one, like that guy we saw in the video who can play double stops, but then he switched the ocarinas. Yeah, he was always switching. Uh, I don't know if you right? caught that. Yeah. He was suddenly suddenly had a bigger ocarina for the lower pitches. You know, he was switching around. I, I all think the he time. was keeping them in the piano or something like that. Like they were definitely yeah, he was, appearing he out of nowhere. Grab them very quickly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that because these these things have just like an octave range. So in a way, it's quite uh, it's quite simple simple to play i mean i was uh i, I don't play it too often because i don't want to like annoy the neighbors and, yeah. and just you don't you know, drive look crazy, you don't want to flex on the world too hard because if you became if you put some practicing in sh i mean like you were just so talented that you would probably just become you know an ocarina player soloist as well on top of <laughs> on top of what you already do so i get it i get it but, but maybe i should maybe it's maybe i should ditch the violin and just uh focus uh, Focus on yeah on your true Ocarina. calling on know. your true calling. Yeah. Wait, wait one second. I finally okay. found my instrument. Oh wait wait let's um uh what which, what which one are we doing? How about some how about like some what other tr anime <laughs> tracks do you know? Uh, I don't know. I'd need I'd need okay. the charts. Yeah, oh charts uh, probably but no we can we can figure this out. We don't need charts. We, we got this. Maybe I should stop. No, no, keep going, keep going. We, 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 we are loving it. Okay, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna get this. I'm, I'm thinking of um, some sadness and sorrow, perhaps. Um, mm -hmm. Like, do you know, do you know Naruto? Mm -hmm. Uh But I don't know what how the music goes uh, off okay. the top of my okay. head. Okay, you don't. But, uh, uh, but that's. Uh, I'm trying to get some uh, sadness and sorrow. Um, okay, it, it kind of goes like <laughs> I don't have ocarina charts, but we're just gonna. Okay, you can hear that, right? Yes. Okay, give up. It's 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 um it's it's the coming it's the coming part this this part wait wait one second this da 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 So that's the that that that's da 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 da. See, 
I don't think I can even produce it, it'd be natural. Wow. Naruto's crying somewhere. <laughs> Because it's so beautiful. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm 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 done now. I'm done. I'm done now. You know, I'm done now. I, I think I, I deserve have this. I, think that I deserve something. I deserve a. No, I don't have a setup for myself. <laughs> Only you get this. Yay! We get it. We deserve this for both of us. <laughs> but you know. You know, I think that the intro to this show, when it shows you, uh, when it, when it shows the like the sixteen bit style image of you playing the violin, I think yeah, that might be an ocarina from now on. <laughs> uh, oh, we could <laughs> we could do the Titanic melody. How about that? Yeah, yeah. I think I quit while I'm. I don't know if I'm ahead. No, I'm not no, ahead. This, anyway, this, I quit while I still have some some dignity. Don't leave you know? me hanging with my but. ocarina here. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. It's really hard to control the pitch. It is really hard to get... control the pitch. I, I, yeah. Kudos to that ocarina dude who we saw in the video earlier. Amazing. I mean, he's yeah. actually incredible. Like after trying it for ourselves, like that's 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 ridiculous. That's like it's not like but... recorder. No, no, and, and the way that you that you cover the holes, um, it, I think he he makes subtle adjustments with his fingers right. to sometimes partially slide them in such a way that the pitch will bend uh basically as you get loud the pitch goes up so so there's there's that as well that the pitch changes depending on how loud you're you're blowing into right. it so anyway it's uh amazing yeah. amazing so well anyway i just wanted to i i, I don't even know <laughs> i thought I don't even know how we're ending the stream, but uh, but we're, we're, we we got to end it at some point, and I guess we're just ending it on this on this ocarina battle um, that is uh, we're this just gonna high point. We're on this amazing high point. Uh, but guys, I wanted to thank again Augustine for his wonderful, uh, just insightful comments, advice that he's shared. It really, you've been so generous with your time as well. Uh, I don't think we've ever had a guest stream go on for almost two hours here. Uh, that is uh, practically two hours, yeah. And I uh, just wanted to thank you also from the chat, myself, everyone involved. And guys, remember again, if uh, do go check out Augustine's stuff. He is an incredible, incredible musician, violinist. He's also a uh, not bad ocarina player. He has, you know, that is his next ambitious goal. Will he make it? He's also a fabulous pianist. So, you know, we know he can do everything. But guys, check out his stuff. Um, and thank you so much for joining us on the stream. Uh, it's been uh, an incredible so experience. And thank really you fun. for joining us, Augustine. So everyone say goodbye to Augustine. Uh, and Augustine, bye, any last bye. words? Yeah, okay, goodbye, goodbye. But thanks for having me. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah it was a pleasure. Be safe. Uh, be safe out there. Keep healthy. And uh, I hope to hope it won't be too long until we hang out in person. That's right. That's right. We're going to do some... Uh, some 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 uh, some Vinyaski stuff on the uh, uh, on the live stage. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> that was Boomer moment number five, by the way. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, thank you, Augustine. <laughs> Bye. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.